Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Since the 3.1 Genshin livestream, Hoyo has dropped more official info and previews of our upcoming 5-star Hydro character, Nilu. I'm personally very excited to get her as I found her character to be endearing, but beyond that, I'm even more intrigued and perhaps a bit worried by the unique kit and mechanics she's bringing to the stage. So in this video, I want to share my thoughts on Nilu, why I think she's a possibly interesting late bloomer, and why she may end up being one of the most controversial units as well. First, let's talk about her very hyper-specialized role. Nilu is a strictly bloom-focused character as evidenced by multiple aspects of her kit. One of her talents pushes her into a full Hyjo Denjo party to give your team the Golden Chalice bounty effect. When you're in this state, it increases your team's EM after being attacked by Dendro, and of course, Bloom damage, which damages both you and the enemy, should count as Dendro damage. More importantly, this modifies the original Bloom reaction. Instead of creating regular Dendro cores, you instead create special cores called Bountiful cores. Presumably, this is a significant enough improvement over the regular Dendro cores, as that is what will make her a cut above the rest of Bloom teams and units. All in all, this makes her the first of her kind to be able to modify a reaction. It's an unprecedented effect, and this raises a few questions about the future potential of such a mechanic. Will she be the only one who can access this special bountiful core mechanic? Right now, I'm thinking that that's likely the case. By having this exclusive to her, it will help cement her overall uniqueness, thus making her reruns more relevant and enticing to pull as there will be no other character like her. Now, I could be wrong and maybe eventually someone else might be able to do this too. In fact, maybe even a future Dendro unit could adopt this mechanic as well. But if other future characters could generate such bountiful cores too, then that just might take away some of Nilu's pull relevance, which I think might be more unlikely. This has me thinking if Nilu's new concept of creating a special modified version of an existing reaction serves to foreshadow other units who will have similar effects but on other Denjo reactions. That's certainly not out of the question as there are still many ways to modify these Denjo cores. A specialized version of Hyper Bloom or Burgeon seems very plausible now and that's an interesting prospect. But then again, Nilu's special reaction requires specific team conditions to fulfill, and that comes with big caveats. The most obvious drawback is that Nilu will be treated as a very niche 5-star that is, in a sense, locked to Dendro Hydro-only teams. And while you can technically slot her in other possible teams that involve Hydro, it's very hard to ignore the benefit of her unique buff. Not putting her in an exclusive Dendro Hydro team takes away what makes Nilu's kit hers, like getting a sports car only to drive in a low speed limit. Previous characters have some iteration of this exclusiveness. For instance, Goro for Geo teams gives maximized buffs with three Geo members. Yunjin has a small buff that increases the more elements you have in your team. Shenhe was our first limited 5-star to actively contribute to an element niche. Point being, element-specific team effects are not new. But Nilu is the most extreme version yet of this. That alone removes some of the fun and useful interactions Bloom teams have with other elements. Cryo units can no longer help freeze and keep enemies in place, so fridge teams are out of the question, which for me was one of the more fun ways to play Bloom. Animal units and their crowd control and swirling effects are also not an option. Kazuha, Venti, and Sucrose aren't there to help keep the enemies and cores together, which was also one helpful utility in some Bloom teams. Furthermore, she comes at a point where we still only have a very limited selection for Denjo teammates. Out of the current three, Tignari is not really a good idea due to his kit being suited for Quicken comps, so we have Traveler and Kole who are at least free, but also are your only options right now. And in order to maximize Bloom, you'll want to keep Traveler and Kole together as you need the combined Dendro application to keep up with Nilu's Hydro application. That will automatically make her last teammate a Hydro unit, at least for now. And since we will likely still be taking self-damage from Bountiful cores, and we don't yet have a Hydro Shielder nor a Dendro Healer, that leaves us with Hydro Healers Kokomi and Barbara as the top options for survival. And so, a lot of early judgment on Nilu is going to be held back by her very limited teammate variety on top of the already limited team template. Your most viable teammates right now are chosen for you already, and you're being pigeonholed into the double Dendro, double Hydro team. If we're given these heavy restrictions, it's fair to expect that the trade-off is good. Right now, it's hard to determine whether her team's total damage will make her limitations very much worth it, and if they will be strong enough to make their mark on the meta. 
But if I'm being optimistic, I think one way to treat her is someone who needs time to show off her entire dance choreography. Like a slow dance working its way towards a climax, Nilu's potential will also take long to develop with the slow arrival of Dendro units. And even then, you're not sure how worth the wait it will be. Will Kusanali's or future Dendro applicators release make Nilu more enticing to pull? Will a new Hydro unit be created to highly complement her bloom restricted teams too? Pulling her now will be a very long-term investment or gamble that could be a bust or boom. Right now, I'm sure Nilu worshippers, me being one of them, can enjoy Nilu already despite her early team limitations. But of course, my fingers are crossed that Hoyo made her with the intent of giving her more variety to her teams and synergistic units in the future. There is one more interesting feature of her kit that caught my attention which is her multi-step skill. To recap how it works, when you cast her elemental skill, there are three steps you can do, and she gives herself two different buffs depending if the third dance step ends with a normal attack or another elemental skill cast. By ending it with a normal attack, she enters a sword dance state, where your normal attacks become infused with hydro damage and your third hit creates this forward hydro slash called luminous illusion. This infusion is meant as a source of hydro damage and application to, of course, help create bountiful cores. On the other hand, ending her dance with a skill cast instead creates this tranquility aura that follows you and constantly applies Hydro in an AoE, like how Barbara does with her skill. I like the concept of creating different outcomes depending on your attack combos. Having multi-part combos or modified effects aren't as unique to her. T. Luke has a three-part hit to his skill that you have to keep pressing too. Child's Burst has two different forms depending on his stance. But Nilu's concept combines both modified abilities and multi-step combos, making her the most realized version of this mechanic yet. And I think it's one way to create more engaging gameplay experiences. Genshin has very limited control buttons, so giving a single button multiple functions or even connecting different abilities to produce a special ability is how I imagine Hoyo can spice up combat controls. With only the livestream footage as my source, the skill's AoE aura is best for enemy mobs and off-field utility, while the normal attacks might be more suited for on-field driving, I'd have to test it myself. As stated by the designer, we have to adapt these depending on our situation, and I think that's a good direction to take to add versatility in a character's kit. And particularly for Nilu, I find it peculiar how her team has self-imposed hard limitations, but at the same time, her kit's mechanics, creating a new type of core, having different outcomes based on your dance steps, is also adding variety in itself. It's like one aspect is making up for the other. So I guess all this means to say that Nilu is one of the more intriguing characters for me, and I'm extremely curious to see where she's going. Hoyo is introducing something definitely new, and it's an even more drastic change to our already existing niche characters. Is she paving the way for these new reaction modifying team locking features? Will time help realize these limitations have so much potential after all, or will she end up being one of the most divisive units created? Other than that, keep your eyes peeled for upcoming official info that Hoyo will release. Until then, we have lots of other content to look forward to. But what do you think of Nilu? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!